Twitter. Then he became popular leader. He continued to go further, and now he's Ghana's prime minister. Ghana, Ghana is the name. Ghana, we wish to proclaim. We will be jolly and merry and gay. The sixth of March, Independence Day. Okay, guys. I am giving you a warm welcome to this episode, just like I promised you last week. This episode is also a journey to independence. We are still on the Mother Ghana, and we are yet to find out more about how the independence all came about. A lot of people are asking, how? Was it Kwame Nkrumah that went for the Gold Coast and then changed the name to Ghana or what? A lot of things are happening right there on the internet. We have with us our historian once again who is going to brief us and tell us more about the journey to uh, independence. I'm here with my lovely girls. Hello girls, come around. And we are going to have it. So before we set the board, we are going for a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. So stay glued. Are you ready? It's time to bring Bambini Fun to Cape Town this Easter. Bambini Show presents Easter Family Fun Day. Okay, to the left, not to the right. Now lean back. You know the vibes. Stop nation. What be your price? Yesterday price, no be today price. It's family time, so daddy, mommy, friends, and family. Let's all gather at Nel Gardino this Easter to bond together. Come and join our family games, dancing, singing, and other fun activities. Activities. Grab your ticket for a cool 20 Ghana cities for single and 80 Ghana cities for a family of five and enjoy free Indomie, bouncy castle, swimming and other free goodies. Dates on Easter Monday, 10th of April 2023 at Nel Gardino, opposite DBL in Cooperidia at 9am sharp. Guest artist is multiple award winning group, Donation! Okay to the left, not to the right, now lean back. You know the vibes, stop me shine. Schools, churches, and individuals can call 0558 218 548 or 0543 341 250 for further details. Bambini Easter Family Fun Day is brought to you by Indomie. Media partners are okay to the left, not to the right. Now lean back. You know the vibes, stop me shine. What be your price? You know the Bambini vibe. See you there. Back to the right. Now lean back. You know the vibe. Stop me. Happy! Yay! Girls, are you so excited today? Yes. You see the way last week you guys were rocking, you were asking questions and all of that. Today, to bring out your best, okay? Oh, smiley. Let me see your smile. Let me see your shouting. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here we are. <clears throat> we are all anticipating to see who our historian is, but this is not a surprise because we already saw him last week, right? And guys, don't forget, Bambini is yet to surprise you again with our seasonal family day out. That is the family day out or the Easter fun fair which is happening live on the 7th of April, 2023. If you've not heard anything about it, then I am here to tell you that tell your friend to tell your friend to tell another friend. Easter convention. <laughs> this is Babini Fun Fair. It's more or less like a convention because I said convention because it is Easter. It, is, it will be held in Kufuigia. We are coming with your superstar and it's a surprise. I know. You are guessing who we are coming with, but all you have to do is to get your ticket, grab it, and then call the numbers on your screen. We will give you more information. My name is Abna Aminia, and you are still watching Bambini. This is the month March, and Mother Ghana is what we are preaching about. So, guys, we are diving straight into our conversation, but before we set the ball rolling, like you see, the seat is empty, so let's invite our guest for today with a round of applause. Ooh. Wow, finally he's here with us. Say, you're welcome once again. Thank you. We really enjoyed last week's episode. In fact, you educated us 
on the history of Ghana and many more. Today's episode is about the journey to independence. And I believe you really have the newest just for us. And we can't wait, as you can see. <laughs> we are already, right? Right. Yes, and sir, the floor is yours. Thank you. You're yeah. When it comes to the journey to independence, mm -hmm. let us start by remembering this famous man I mentioned last week. Okay. He's an inspiration to every Ghanaian, every African, James Kwejil Agri. Okay. You know, before Agri came to the scene, we had a school like Infante Pim School and all the mission schools in Ghana, they were either, they were boys' schools and wow. girls were not put to school because they felt that a woman's place is always at the kitchen. kitchen. Then Agri said That's that right. if you educate a woman, you educate a whole nation, but when you educate a man, you educate an individual. Wow. And I believe you agree with him. Yes. Those of us men, when we go to work, we don't come back home e earlier, oh. but the women would always be with the children and give them all the education that they have had. You know, then they will be taking care of the house, taking care of everybody, including their husbands. Wow. And in the end, we say that it is the women who really build the nation. Agri was not wrong. So when uh, Achimota School was established, it became the first May school in the country and it produced so many women and today we have wonderful girls like you having <coughs> received education and continuing with education <coughs> it was agri who told everybody in ghana that the black man was very capable of managing everything about himself wow. and i'm saying that he was in commerce mentor and agri said that Blacks and whites could work together and rule the nation together. So let us pay tribute to Agri oh. before we come to Nkroma. Mm -hmm. And don't also forget people like J.B. Dankwa, because they were those who had formed the UGCC, mm -hmm. and they were those who needed a general secretary for the CP, uh, UGCC, and they invited Kwame Nkroma. Okay. But because they were either businessmen or full-time lawyers. Mm -hmm. They didn't have time to go around everywhere in the country mm -hmm. to campaign and sensitize people to join them to drive away the white man. Wow. It was Kwame Nkrumah who did full-time political work. Mm -hmm. uh, and when the others would not agree with him because he was going so fast, the UGCC leadership decided to sack him from the party. And then he also decided that if you are to sack me from the party, then I will form my own political party. And he formed the Convention People's Party. And the CPP. The CPP. Okay. You know, why Nkuma would choose CPP was that? Mm -hmm. You see, the name was Convention, common to both of them. Mm -hmm. But Kwame Nkuma realized that in those days, our parents were largely illiterate. And they could not pronounce the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC. It was a mouthful for them. Oh. So Kwame Nkuma said CPP. Simple. Very simple. <laughs> and then when Kwame Nkrumah came to the city, they wrote to mm. independence. We should learn very basic things which are not even in textbooks. One of them was that even though Kwame Nkrumah stayed outside the country for a very long time, when he came, he was not speaking slangs. Wow. He spoke still as an African, as Mandela did, as uh, Kofi Annan did. Kwame Nkrumah didn't want to speak like certain people I wouldn't want to mention. Wow. They go outside for just two, three years, and then when they come, I say, why can I be like here? Yeah. <laughs> Nkuma hated that. Second, in those days, uh, everybody patted their head to look like a white man, like the way the white people, when they comb their head, they would pat it nicely. Mm. We used to call it a boy, a boy. or something like that. Okay. Kwame Nkuma would just comb the hair through. You know, and then do the Afro and go there. Just the Afro, simple, like the way you people have the, yes, uh, you are a lady dressed like a lady, but like this, straight. I'm sure you've seen Nkrumah's photographs yes. everywhere, always. <clears throat> so he hated speaking slangs, he hated the aboy type, and he also hated wearing ha ha cap or hat. Mm -hmm. 
he did it. No, he hated that. I believe that was personal. He complained. So these are some of his characteristics. And he also hated the white man's name. So when he was born, he was given the name Francis Kofi Enria Kwame Nkrumah. And he took away the white man's name. And he became simply Kwame Nkrumah. So those who have... What about the Osajifu? Where did he get his name? The Osajifu, he had it from the Ashanti king called uh, Osea Jiman Prempe II. When he was able to win independence for the people of Ghana, the Ashantis made a very big gathering and invited him to Menshia Palace and they gave him the honor of Sajifu, ah. meaning the redeemer, the one who is able to lead us to a war and win. I see, I saw. Wow, this is interesting, right? Are you loving it? Are you sure? Okay, what's your question for sake? Um, is it because that Dr. Kwame Nkrumah had passion for independence? That's why he was known as a visionary leader. It was because he had a passion for independence, but that was not his only passion. Kwame Nkrumah felt that all black people at that time were suffering under colonialism, were under the white people, and they were taking away all our gold, our timber, everything, mm. and our land, you know. So Kwame Nkrumah felt that the whole of Africa must come together. So the first passion was for independence. Second passion was a continental unity. Why a continental unity? You know, the people of Africa were one. It was a white man who put boundaries between the countries. And Nkrumah didn't want to see those artificial boundaries. All black people were one. And Nkrumah wanted that thing back. I'm sure in history you've learned about the Berlin Conference of 1888, you know, where the white people sat in Berlin, capital of Germany, and decided that they would come and share Africa or partition Africa among themselves. When Nkrumah read about this thing, he was very angry. That why should he have our continent? Somebody who also has his continent somewhere and should think of partitioning the country among themselves. So he wanted Africa to come together as one country. Above all, he felt that when you are big, then you can have big economic and political power. Then you can also face Russia, you can face America, you can face India, China, all the big countries in the world. Africa as one country could face them. So the passion was not only for independence, but for the unity of Africa. Wow, this is very interesting. So, so please, during the 1951 election, Nkrumah was in prison, so who did his campaign for him? You have asked a very wonderful question, and that is why it is good to learn history. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we mention Nkrumah, and then we forget other people who helped Nkrumah so, that, so much so that bad for them. Nkrumah wouldn't have come to power at all. Mm -hmm. And I've told you that, but for a uh, power grant, uh, J.B. Dankwa and others, Nkrumah wouldn't have come to Ghana because they invited him. Okay. So we shouldn't forget those people. Mm. The one who suggested him was Akwenje. We should never forget him. He said that hey, when I was returning from London, there was a Ghanaian who liked organization. Mm. And so when you make him general secretary, he will do well. And they brought Kwame Nkrumah. Oh now, during the 1951 election, Kwame Nkrumah was in prison because the CPP had declared a boycott of European goods. Nobody should buy European goods and everybody listened to him. So the colonial economy crumbled within 24 hours. Nkrumah called it the positive action and they identified him and put him to jail. He was in prison and his bosom friend called Komila Agbeli Bedema. Mr. K. A. Bedema, he was C K. A. yes, he was CPP's uh, assistant chairman after Kwame Nkrumah. The white people met Bedema and told him that forget about Kwame Nkrumah, let him be in prison, become the leader of the CPP, and let him rot over there. Then you oh. will become the first prime minister of Ghana. Mm -hmm. They gave him money. They gave him all the resources. The man took the money and made a very big banner of. Kwame Nkrumah, <laughs> and went everywhere and said that now I have seen that the white man is afraid of Nkrumah and oh. they want me. So he campaigned for Nkrumah so much so that during the election, 
Kwame Nkuma was the MP for Accra Central, now called Ododo Dio Dio Constituency. <laughs> and Nkuma almost had 100%. It has never happened in Ghana's history before. So the white people were forced to bring him out of prison to make him leader of government businesses. And the big appreciation, the gratitude goes to Mr. K.A. Bedema. Wow, this is great. Princess, your question. How did Ghana gain their independence? The independence of Ghana <laughs> is what we have been talking about. That was a UGCC that traveled everywhere. Mm -hmm. So if Kwame Nkoma, uh, uh, that started and then the CPP also came in. If Nkoma had not come, we would have gained our independence all right. But maybe that one would have been about 1980 or 1990. But because of the presence of Nkrumah on the scene, mm -hmm. and then with able people like Bedema that I have mentioned, with Kojo Botio, mm -hmm. with Aku Eje, mm -hmm. and then a famous organizer called Krobo mm -hmm. then we had women too who wow. were with them. Yes, we had a very That's famous, okay. yes, a Makole woman called Dede Ashekeshan. Dede Ashekeshan. She was CPP's top financier. Wow. Because of this, we are going for a quick commercial break. After that, we'll continue. Stay tuned. Bambini! Yay! Two for Rudia. Are you ready? It's time to bring Bambini Fun to Cote d'Ivoire this Easter. Bambini Show presents Easter Family Fun Day. Okay, to the left, not to the right. Now lean back. You know the vibes, dope nation. What be your price? Yesterday price, no be today price. It's family time, so daddy, mommy, friends and family. Let's all gather at Neo Gardino this Easter to bond together. Come and join our family games, dancing, singing, and other fun activities. Grab your ticket for a cool tiny Ghana sedes for single and 80 Ghana sedes for a family of five. And enjoy free Indomie, bouncy castle, swimming, and other fun. Dates on Easter Monday, 10th of April 2023 at Nel Gardino, Opposite DBL in Cooperidia at 9 a.m. sharp. Guest artist is multiple award winning group, Dope Nation. Okay, to the left, not to the right. Now lean back, you know the vibes, Dope Nation. Schools, churches, and individuals can call 0558 218 548 or 0543 341 250 for further details. Bambini Easter Family Fun Day is brought to you by Indomie. Media partners are Okay to the left, not to the right. Now lean back. You know the vibes, Dope Nation. What be your price? You know the Bambini vibe. See you there. Not to the right. Now lean back. You know the vibes, Dope Nation. Welcome back from the quick commercial break. We are still here with Mr. Frempon. Yes, Mr. Anochi Frempon. And he's educating us more. If not for today, I didn't know Mokala women contributed to the growth of Ghana. In fact, the independent wasn't only from the men. We also were there. I didn't know that. <laughs> Erica, what's up? Any question for Sam? <coughs> Yes, the Watson Commission made a recommendation that the government should speed up the process towards Africanization of the country. When you talk about Africanization, like the Europeans should diminish and make sure that uh, Ghanaians will become independent. The Watson Commission finished its work and then another commission took over called the Kusi Constitutional Commission and that also made recommendations even for a date mm -hmm. for elections mm -hmm. and then parties were already available and then the 1951 elections came up and what uh, would make the cpp great was that the other political parties at that time you know the ugcc had shrunk their support had gone to kwame Nkrumah, mm -hmm. so they formed a party uh, called the National Liberation Movement. It was an Ashanti party that was looking for 
the breakaway of Ashanti. And you would understand, Ashantis were the only people in Ghana who formed an empire. And it's a world-class empire. You can't take that one from them. And they were only conquered by the British in 1874 after the Sagranti War. You know, so Ashantis felt that if the white man should go away, they shouldn't come under anybody. They should rule their, their own country. And then the voter people, the voter region people, Please, don't forget that up to Keta were, has, had always been part of Ghana. But uh, from beyond Keta and Apwe, Ho, 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 up to the present day, Oti region and then Upper East region, mm -hmm. they had been carved away from Togo. And they wanted to join the Republic of Togo again. Okay. So they wanted their own independence. And their leader was called S.G. Anto. Mm -hmm. And then their LM leader was Bafo Akuto. And then the Muslim people too felt that Christians did not respect them. So they did their own party. So they formed Muslim Association Party. And then the Northern people also felt that, before, yes, uh, the Northern People's Party, NPP at that time, they also felt that Southerners did not have much respect for them. So if the white people should go, they would serve us. They wouldn't want to serve us. So they formed their own party. The only party that was a national party was the Convention People's Party, the CPP. So after the 1951 election, the white people said that we will not give independence to the CPP until all the parties had become nationalized because we don't want tribal parties. And so the Northern People's Party, the Trans -Togola, Trans uh, Voter Togoland Party, and then the Muslim Association Party all came together to form a party called the UP, United Party to challenge the CPP. And CPP again beat them in the 19, or do I say beat it, in the 1954 elections. And Kwame Nkrumah's position from leader of government businesses was promoted, went up to prime minister. So before independence, Nkrumah became the prime minister of Ghana. That was in 1954. How come we are no longer hearing about CPP, the UPP, and the rest, and now it's like NPP, NDC. How did they also come into the scene? Yes, because after uh, the 1957, uh, after independence, mm -hmm. Nkrumah changed the independence, 1957 independence constitution in 1960 so that he would become a president. The difference was that from prime minister, he became president. At the time, he was prime minister. The Queen of England was still represented here by the governor general. You heard about Aden Clark and then Lord Listowell. And Cromer said, we don't want white people here. So we had our uh, republic. And you know, we, had, we used to have Republic Day 1st yes. July every year celebrating it. So Nkrumah became the full-time president of Ghana. In 1966, there was a military and police collaboration that unseated Kwame Nkrumah. They overthrew Nkrumah's party and they formed a, a coup d'etat in the military junta called the National Liberation uh, Council that overthrew Kwame Nkrumah's government. And so Nkrumah was forced to stay in exile in Guinea. Then in 1972, he died in uh, outside the country. Was he scared or was he running for his life? Why did he go die over there instead of fighting for Ghana? He, once your government is overthrown, you are no longer recognized in your country. You become an enemy to your country. When you come back, the soldiers will kill you. So he stayed in exile in Guinea. And in Guinea, the president of Guinea called Sekuture was Nkrumah's friend. And he made him the co-president. So he became a co-president until he fell ill and then went outside the country for treatment and unfortunately died. But how is that possible for somebody to come from another country and bring in another country? Because the man was so famous, he was needed by other people. So when Ghana rejected him, uh, Guinea took him. In fact, so many countries were scrambling for him because they liked him. And he settled on Guinea because Sekuture had always been his personal friend, very, very, very personal friend. And so he stayed there until six years later, in 1972, he died. 
And then the constitution changed. We had 1969 constitution. That one also fell in 1972. Generally, Champon came. Then we had another constitution in 1979. That one also fell, you know, as a result of the 31st December coup d'etat led by J.J. Rollins. And then in 1981, Rollins changed from military regime to a constitutional or civilian regime. So from 1992 to date, we have had peaceful and democratic system called Ghana. We don't have soldier or military regimes, and we don't want to have them again so that our presidents can have the opportunity to rule the country. And that is why we have different political parties at the moment, wow. new ones altogether. So did the British help Ghana in gaining independence? I wouldn't say the British helped Ghana in gaining independence. It has never happened anywhere in the world that when you are serving a master, and for as long as the master is making money out of you and you are young and you are serving him very well, that master will say, go away, get your independence. So the British did not help in Kroma. They rather hated everybody for thinking about independence. And even in other African countries, such as Zimbabwe, which used to be called Rhodesia, you know, they had to fight the white people before they could get their independence. So getting independence does not mean the white man, the English man, helped you in any manner. No. <laughs> if anything, he put impediments in their way. Because after the 1951 elections, they should have handed the country over to Kwame Nkrumah. But they never did that. They continued to borrow time until 1957. They felt that they had no choice than to leave the country. Obviously, they are the same people we are running from. So, Princess, your question. What happened on 6th March 1957? On 6th March 1957, uh, many important things took place. The most significant thing that took place was that it was the day that Ghana lowered the British flag. The British flag has a name. It is called the Union Jack. So when I ask you, what is the Union Jack? It is the British flag. And the British flag has got three lions in it, the symbol of three lions. So when you also say the three lions, the three lions, they stand for the British flag. On that day, we lowered it, and then we ascended there a new flag with the colors red, gold, green, and the black star inserted in it. So that was the day that it happened. The second thing that happened on 6 March 1957 was that on that day, we stopped singing the British National Anthem. And then we started singing our own anthem called uh, God Bless Our Homeland, Ghana. Ghana. It was the first time we sang that national anthem. The third thing that happened on that day was that from that was the day we got to know that our new name was called what? Ghana. And everybody was banned from referring to us as the Gold Coast. And then on that day, another significant thing that happened was that the Northern Smoke, it used to be called the NT Smoke, the Northern Territory Smoke, this thing I'm wearing, Batakari, Kwame Nkrumah made it a national dress for all Ghanaians. I see. Before that time, it was only Northerners wearing it. Kwame Nkrumah said it should become our national dress for every Ghanaian. So very important things took place on that day. Wow, this is very interesting. And because of your kind taxi, it means that we are enlarging this episode to next week as well. In fact, this whole month of March, we are exhibiting the talent of Ghana and showing the world how independence we won and also our history, how we got it. Next week also we are bringing you another exciting episode and don't forget this season we are moving all the way to Kofuridria for our family day out. So if you've not heard of it, I am telling you today to tell your family, friends and everybody around that the family fun day of Bambini is happening right in Kofuridria. Come with your family, your friends and everybody. 
I believe it's Mr. Nacho will also be joining us that day. So it will be a whole lot of fun. Guys, are you happy? Yes. Of course, next week we are continuing this episode. So follow us on all our social media handles at Bambini TV. And also subscribe, like, and share. My name is Abuna Ahimia. Let's say bye-bye to our viewers. Bye-bye.